Managing a, a race team like this, being a team owner, I have a different background than most. I've come as a driver uh, and also on the team. Um, it's uh, there's a lot to it. Uh, you you have to be on top of everything. You have to understand absolutely every bit of the car, every bit of the process, uh, better than the other person that, that's working for you. All the, all the other crew members, you have to know their job better than you you know better than they do. Hopefully, you want them to know it as well as you do, but that's usually not the case. Um, so, and you have to know how, what it's like to be a driver. You have to know how to communicate with the driver. When a driver tells you what the car is doing, you have to be able to understand what the car is doing um, through, his, through his eyes. Um, and then be able to make changes in it that you believe will improve it, which seemed to be the case this weekend. Um, it's, it's, just a lot of, uh, it's just a lot of detail work. It's a lot of oversight, of course. There's budgets involved. The money has to come from somewhere. From sponsors, you have to deal with them. Um, it, it's, a, it's a very uh, involved process. It's just basically like being a CEO of a, of a little company that moves its location every weekend. Laguna Seca is a very technical track. Uh, it's also very challenging in a lot of ways. With Laguna, you have the corkscrew, which is a, a cresting of a hill, and the car just falls off down like a roller coaster. And when you're heading up to that corner, all you see is blue sky and horizon. You don't see anything else, and you've got to have it sort of take a pretty good leap of faith and position the car correctly, you know, with your right foot to the floor as you shoot down the corkscrew. Um, that, that's just one of the challenges that really separates the quick drivers from the, from the okay drivers at a track like this. Uh, there's probably 50 or 60 different adjustments you can make on a car uh, at any given track, any given time that will affect its handling. Everyone has to use Pirelli tires, the same tire, the same compound. You have no choice, and that is a huge benefit, I think, to sports car racing because Unlike some other series that have multiple tire manufacturers and compounds and you can choose this or choose that, the more variables you can eliminate, the better. It just comes down to car prep, chassis engineering, and driver ability, and I, that, that's what I think makes this kind of racing the best. Uh, this is what the car was reading, and based on these numbers, um, Pablo will tell me what to set these at before they go in the car when they're cold. Air is not as consistent as nitrogen. It gets affected by hot and cold. So in the morning time, if you have a practice, you'll set the tires, and then if you set it in the afternoon, it's hot out, so your readings are off. Okay. What you want, what you think is your peak performance is not actually right if you have air. Nitrogen doesn't get affected by that as much. There's the mark them so that we know how much wear is on them, how new they are, how long they've actually been on the car, how many heat cycles. Uh, are you going to need them? Is this happening? Yeah. This car's got 400 and some odd horsepower. We're pushing it, that's what's happening. My name's Rob McCabe. I'm from uh, Toronto, Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, I'm one of the head mechanics. This chassis on this car is totally different than anything I've ever worked on. It's a six liter, it's detuned. They usually put over 550 horsepower. It's detuned to 450. Uh, Rob's only here because we pity Canadians. Yeah, something like that. They, they live yeah. in the frigid cold. They got yeah. a terrible government. Yeah. Nice guy, but you know, not very bright. Yeah. But we humor him. Yeah. We let him think he fixed stuff, and then when he, when he leaves, <laughs> we refix it the right way. Uh, <laughs> we gave him credit, we're like, good job, Rob. Yeah. Like, this is your special place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, uh... Our quality, the big issue is going to be the driver on brand new tires with no other traffic out there. So it, it, it usually means a lot. Um, the most important, well, the biggest hurdle we've had this weekend has been uh, in the car, the second driver getting into the car. Now Diego has driven this car all year, and putting a driver familiar with a car in a new track is no big deal to a pro driver. But putting a pro driver in a car he's never driven in, even yeah. at a track he may know like the back of his hand, 
is a challenge because this is unlike anything he's ever driven. So okay. that's that's the learning curve. And he's been out there on tires that were decent but not great, not new certainly. Uh, so we've we've had him learn the car with less than perfect grip. Tires can cover up a lot of mistakes you make, brand new tires. They'll, yeah. they'll cover your mistakes. So now he's been learning on older tires. Now he's going on brand new stickers, and it should be a whole world of difference. He should do a lot for his confidence, and he should go pretty quick. Yeah, we had a little tire fire there. Uh, what happens is the brakes get so hot that when uh, they pick up the pieces of rubber or something like that from um, from the track, they they start to they, they combust when the car comes to a stop because there's no air cooling them off, and the temperature is about 800 degrees on the brake disc, and that will combust rubber. What happens is when it starts to spread and burns one of the ducts, or there's more rubber there, then it gets bigger, and then of course, if you all know, fire gets bigger and fire doesn't stop until it stops burning things. So we just shot it with some cold fire. Cooled it down, took away the oxygen, problem solved. We have to find, we have to source the piece yeah. and get it, and get it less expensive. ZZH260. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Type that in Google and let's get it. We're, we're, we're trying it, and it works. I owe you my life. Well, it's so much easier when you do it from the back. That's what I always say. Historically, we're the only sanctioning body that's managed to pull off every race here without having a wreck in turn one. That's what I expect to see continue here.
just to do another splash. To, 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 his next stop, you're getting in. Okay, but uh, he, he, he's with shorts at the end. I don't know why he did that. He didn't know. On that tire load fuel, there won't be another stop. That's the, that's the plan. Two hundred and fifty, it was called, in Monterey, California. It's the fifth round of the uh, Grand Am Rolex Sports Car Series Championship. Uh, our two drivers were Diego Alessi and Ryan Finney. Uh, Ryan started the race, uh, qualified tenth. He quickly advanced up to fifth uh, during the race. Uh, unfortunately, he had a flat tire, which we had to change under green, which is never good. And uh, from there, we, he fought back. He lost a lap in the process, so we were a complete lap down. And, Due to some good strategy, a little bit of luck, and some extremely good driving on his part, we, we got the lap back. Uh, and then we put Diego Alessi, who's our full-time driver this year, in the car. And I think Diego got in the car in 11th and ran it all over fourth place, which was a pretty good result considering what we went through. 